Hello my darlings, today I present to you another Bakugo story. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike it and comment something down below. This way you can support me with the YouTube algorithm so more people watch my stuff. I would greatly appreciate that. Lastly, sharing the video also helps, and if you have any fan art you would like to draw off me or about my fanfics, I have a Discord, link is down below, so I can immediately react to it. But in general, fan art is always appreciated. Any fan art, in fact. I'm okay if it's Rule 34. <laughs> okay, let's get right into the show. You had been in the hospital for quite some time now. In fact, it was so long that you stopped counting the days. Alone in your wide, sterile room. Crude drawings you made that looked nothing more than a few color strokes on paper were hung around your bed with tape. On a small coffee table next to you, you were watching an episode of a really long anime on a cheap laptop your dad had brought, so you wouldn't go insane from the boredom. You had started watching the show when you got here, and just barely reached the halfway point. It was some silly show about pirates. Honestly, you had lost the plot around the time zombies showed up. So now you were just enjoying the pretty colors. But your attention was quickly ripped off of your screen when the door to your room opened. In came a whole bunch of people. Mostly doctors, while two nurses pushed in a bed. On it lay the blonde boy. His head was wrapped in bandages and he seemed to be fast asleep. Probably some emergency operation and he was still knocked out. After the group of medical professionals had entered, two more people came in. One dressed all black with long hair. The other a small fuzzy creature. Probably be the result of a mutation quirk. But before you got a proper look, one of the nurses closed the curtains around your bed. You shrugged and simply increased the volume of your enemy after somehow managing to put in a pair of earbuds. Looks like your fortune of having a room to your own had just come to an end. The curtain remained closed for roughly two episodes of your show until you dozed off. Hey. What? There was a voice. Hey. There it was again. After they called out for a third time, you were finally awake. You looked around yourself. The curtains had been pulled back. It was still day. Or well, maybe it was already the next day. You blinked and then looked to where the voice was coming from. Hey, he said with a scowl. Who's here? He pointed to the table your laptop was on, and you blushed. You wanted to thank him, but you couldn't. You shook your head in acknowledgement and then slowly reached out for the spoon. Cinnamon porridge, just barely enough to fill your gut. But since you couldn't properly chew, it had to be enough. You grabbed the spoon with your entire hand until you saw the white of your knuckles and shakily began consuming the sweet concoction. Trusting what the doctors told you about your meals, it must have been double the dose of sugar because you actually tasted something. Or maybe your condition was just getting better. Meanwhile, the guy was watching you curiously completely ignoring his own food. It was distracting. To the point where you could hear your own heartbeat. Besides, weren't hospital rooms gender-specific? After half of your bowl was empty, however, you had enough and looked over at him. What? He barked. Shouldn't you be the one asking that? I'm just curious. You didn't answer. After an awkward minute of silence, he sighed. Ah, fine. Gonna try eating this crap. This entire experience must have been just as awkward for him as it was for you. Name's Bakugo. 
he said after taking a bite from his food. Then after another bite, he grunted and swallowed. Growling before saying, Shit is horrible. After you didn't answer him again, he seemingly gave up, trying to lift the mood. He finished his plate, then pulled out his phone and began playing something on it. The music clearly indicating it was Plants vs. Zombies. After finishing your slop, you fell back into your bed. And sighed. Quite enough so you didn't hear it. Alright, I give up. What is actually wrong with you? Cause, like, you look fine to me. It had been a week since Bakugo became your bad buddy. So far, your conversations had been very one-sided. You looked at him, but didn't reply. I know you can talk. Are you talking with your parents? You raised both hands in defense. But before you think I was eavesdropping, I put in my headphones and listened to music, so I didn't understand a thing. You blinked. I mean, yeah. You need help to move around and stuff. And you get carted out every day in your bed for something. Was being nosy his way of making friends? After a minute of silence, he sighed. I know, this isn't, like, my concern. But can't I be, like, uh, worried about you? Is this what I'm supposed to say in this situation, to not escalate it? He had the sensitivity of a dump truck. Like, we're both in a hospital. For all I know, you could be dead tomorrow. He scratched the back of his head and blushed. Or not. This isn't the intensive care unit. But you get what I mean, nerd. Realizing he was getting nowhere, he dropped the issue. Nah, sorry. Was all he said with a sad tone, before pulling the curtain closed. Somehow you felt him saying sorry with such sincerity was something he didn't do often. Did you feel bad? Of course you did, but not enough to actually talk to him. Do it to your condition. However, if you had known that tonight you would need his help, you would have. You had fallen asleep out of boredom as per usual at around 10 p.m. Considering at home you stayed up all night until 7 in the morning, this had been a drastic change. But the hospital also had strict times for eating breakfast at 9. But the hospital had also strict times for eating. Breakfast at 9, lunch at 12, dinner at 7, so to prevent being hungry for the lo So to prevent being hungry for too long, you adjust your schedule. However, at around 3 in the morning, you awoke, covered in sweat from a nightmare. Honestly, you were glad it ended so quickly, thanks to your bladder. The problem was, even after pressing the Need Help button twice, no nurse entered your room. Sure, this happened once before, when there was an emergency, but you'd rather not pee in the bed, especially since someone else was in the room. You looked over to where Bakugo was. He was snoring, admittedly quietly. It was surprisingly rhythmical as well. And if it weren't for your bodily needs, you would try to keep sleeping. And if it weren't for your bodily needs, you would just close your eyes again and continue sleeping. You sighed and moved to the edge of your bed. Sitting up, you let your legs go down slowly. Until they stopped moving. Not feeling any resistance. But they stopped moving, alright. Slowly you shook your legs from left to right, hearing the noise of skin rubbing against the porcelain floor. You stood up. Immediately you felt as if you were falling, while in fact standing. While in fact standing still. Sort of. It was very wobbly. Vertigo setting in as soon as you took the first step. 
It was too dark. Even for a hospital room. And you whimpered during every step you took. That was until the floor gave way. How? Why? You must have twisted your foot by accident. Those were the thoughts in your head as you slammed on the floor unceremoniously with a loud thud. You coughed as air was pressed out of your lungs. With your arms and legs helplessly wiggling, you attempted to drag your body over to the bathroom, knowing full well that unless you could actually see where your arms and legs were, you would not be able to stand up. But when the pain of holding in your liquids became too strong, you began to quietly sob. Until you saw light. Did you finally die of your constipation? No, of course you didn't. Hey, hey! heard Bakugo's voice as he jumped out of his bed. The fuck's happening? He grabbed your shoulder and propped you against the wall. I need help. You sobbed out of your half-open mouth. Please, bathroom. You pleaded to him. Uh, sure, sure, he said concerned. A part of him wanted to point out that now you were talking to him after such a long time, but he would save that for now. You could only feel the pressure of his arms as he lifted you off the ground, carrying you to the bathroom. Goofy, you mumbled. Uh, okay, just one second, and if only one drop hits me, I'll kill you. After turning on the light in the bathroom, he gently set you on the toilet before closing the door behind him. At least he was somewhat of a gentleman. You could see the shadow of his feet from under the door. He was waiting for you to finish to carry you back to your bed. After you were done with your business and were back in your bed... And after you were done with your business and were put back to bed, he spoke up. So, after that embarrassing display, would you mind telling me what is wrong with you? You made a noise, somewhere between a groan and a grunt. You moved one hand up to your mouth, making sure it was properly moved. A few weeks ago, you started. I was attacked. You blinked, thinking about the right words. He wanted to kidnap me. For ransom. Your mouth began to hurt from talking already. He poisoned me. His quirk. Paralysis. You look down at where your feet were. As it turns out, it isn't real paralysis. But it's more like an infection. Uh, to the nervous system. So I can't actually move my body, I just... Your gaze shifted to your right, focusing on some undescribed dot on the wall. They don't know if it's permanent, but it's getting better. We just don't know how much better it will be. As, as in full recovery, or just better, you know? Suddenly the door opened. It was the night nurse. My apologies, there was an emergency in room 6. Is everything in order here? Everything is okay, we... Turns out we didn't need help after all, said Bakugo with a confident smirk. The nurse left after one more apology. Huh. Do you have no feeling in your body? You shook your head. That fall didn't even hurt. You paused for a moment and then added, I, I can feel pressure sometimes, though. Man, how I feel bad, he said. I shouldn't have been so nosy. You shrugged. Most of my movements come from memory at this point. Like my brain knows how to walk, so that's why I need to properly see my movement. Of course, anything I do strains my nerves, that's why I just lie in bed all the time. At the start, I could move at all, it was just 
too weird of a feeling or, well, lack thereof. Bakugo gave a light chuckle, more of pity rather than amusement. <laughs> so that's why you have been so quiet. I get ya. Does it hurt? You know, talking? You nodded, and he grinned reassuringly. <laughs> I should talk for the both of us, then. You deadpanned, and he gave a hearty, all by quiet laugh. <laughs> okay, fine. I won't try lightening the mood. Thank you. You said. For what? You blinked. For getting me on the toilet. You're my hero. You said and somehow managed to smile. It was crooked, most because of your condition. Yet he found it absolutely adorable and found it difficult not to blush. Why are you here? You asked. He sighed sadly. Uh, long story. Some shit happened and my lungs are damaged. At least I managed to save a few people. But I can't do hero stuff if I have trouble breathing after running for like five seconds. He sighed. Man, I feel like I'm 400 pounds too fat. Your eyes lit up. So you're a hero for real? There was pain in his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Not really. I'm training at UA. He said. After another moment of silence, he muttered, I don't know if they can fix it. I want them to. My lifelong goal, dream if you will, I want to be the number one. I mean, if they can make me move again and feel things, even though it's just very little for now, I'm sure you get better. He blinked in confusion. I... His eyes moved towards you. He really needed to hear that. Thank you.